I've had these spent raspberry canes just sitting on the pathway over here these past couple of months and most people would probably compost them or get rid of them burn them but I know better I know that we can use these to create free things for the garden including the raspberry cane edging that I have on the far side of my raspberry bed and so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use these bamboo canes and the raspberry cuttings here so these raspberry canes and I'm going to create another little wattle edging on this side and it looks cute but more importantly it helps to keep the compost and the manure from eroding out of my raspberry bed and down into my pathway and I actually cut down my raspberry canes all of them every winter and that's because I have prima cane autumn fruiting raspberries and they fruit on this new wood that's growing right now so this is this year's crop of raspberries in the making dead easy cut them down in winter they dry out and you can use them for anything you can use them for plant supports you can use them to create this wattle edging and you can also use them to create a kind of frame network around plants and then cover them with fleece and that's another reason that I'm up here at the allotment today and that is because we are expecting some frost potential frost over the weekend and I just want to make sure that my plants are protected especially the potatoes so we're going to have a look at those next I'm also going to give you an update on the book and on the house and we're also going to have a look around the allotment Well, I don't see any foliage, and that's a good sign. It means I don't have to do any extra work today, that this layer of manure is keeping any foliage from the potatoes covered. And that's important because if we do get a frost and the foliage gets burned by frost, it can set my plants back. So if you are expecting frost as well and you have some potato leaves popping up out of the soil, whether they're in a container or out in the ground, just earth them up so you can just draw compost or manure right over the plants. And actually, I just did that. And guess what? Look at this. It's a potato leaf. So they're right here above the soil. So I guess I will have a bit of extra work because I want to make sure that those are covered. And now that I look again, there's another one. Oh dear. Let me go get some compost and I'll show you exactly what you need to do. Now that I'm standing here above this patch, I can see potato leaves on three of the tubers that I planted and the other one must be just under the surface of the compost. And I have an, another good load of, this is aged horse manure here, including a delicious trimmed horse hoof. It's like a horse fingernail, yummy. And some people will tell you that you don't need to earth up early potatoes, that they are determinate and they just grow and it's fine. But this is a case in point why you absolutely do or should, in my opinion, earth up potatoes because of late frosts. And all you need to do is just Yep, there, there are the leaves there. One, two, three, four. <laughs> All you need to do is cover the plants with a good few inches of compost, aged manure, you can use straw, anything to temporarily protect them from frosts. And the leaves will just continue growing right through and it will protect them and the plant will do so much better than if you leave them to fend off the frost and the snow and cold weather on their own. Now, 
I finished writing my book, A Woman's Garden, in July of last year. So I turned over all of the content, the writing, the photos, everything. And I've been telling you about it since then as well. And there have been many people who have pre-ordered my book from July onwards. And that was a very long time ago. And I know that you are anxious to get your books and I have some really good news today. And that is that my book is going to be coming out this month. So in the United States, the official publication date is April 27th. And I think that some booksellers like Amazon still have it at May 4th. I hope that they bump it up because they will definitely have books in stock because I know 100% that all the books have arrived at the, U uh, the US warehouse. But regardless, the books are here and they are going to be delivered very, very soon. And in the UK, there was a, another delay because all of the initial books that were shipped to the UK sold out before my book even hit the shelves. So we, my publisher rather, had to organize an emergency printing in England and those books are going to be delivered on April 20th, which is also the UK's official publication date for A Woman's Garden. So either way, whether you are in the US or the UK, your books are going to be with you in a matter of weeks. And so you can expect to have those popped in the post and through your door very, very soon. And if you're in Canada or in Europe, it might take a little bit longer, but not that much. It's just everything is on the ground now, everything is being shipped and you will, you will have your hands on your copy of A Woman's Garden very soon. Have a look at the plot now. It's all under control for the most part. I haven't planted very much out but I will show you what I have planted in just a sec. This top bed it is going to be planted up with plants that I will raise in the greenhouse first for the most part so that's why it's bare and I've moved a lot of the perennial herbs down into this bed so we've got the sage and the chives the lavender is all starting to grow. You can see the new green growth and that's on pretty much all of them. This large lavender hedge is getting bigger by the year, which is amazing. It started off with a few plants. Uh, most of them I propagated myself. We've got the potatoes here, garlic. The wildlife area over here is just sprouting with so many new leaves and plants and I really hope that they're going to be as hardy as they generally are and be okay through a small cold snap. Peonies in here. I also have the Egyptian walking onions over in the distance. The lovage is coming up and I, I think it's the prettiest it ever is at this time of the year with its purple stems. It's a, it looks like a really tall celery. It has a similar taste, but not quite. And it's used as a, as a seasoning and a herb. Very common in Eastern Europe. And then down below here, again, most of the things that I'm planting into here will grow first at home, including the dahlias, which will be back here in the front. But I have sown a few rows just recently. So I got in two rows of carrots, some French sorrel, and I can't remember what I put in here, beetroot I think. Yes, beets. And I will be putting the big plant labels in here just as soon as I have them sorted. And then over here in this bed, this is going to be a perennial bed, and the perennial leeks that are currently growing in the greenhouse will be going here next to the garlic chives. And then within the netting, these first four plants, these are the nine star broccoli, a perennial type of broccoli slash cauliflower. And I just want to show you that they're starting to form buds. Do you see that? So as long as I keep picking all of those buds and they'll get quite a bit larger, 
then these plants will continue to live for up to eight years and I just keep picking every spring. I like the sound of that. And then down here, this big old plant started off as a plant that wasn't quite this big. This is the Taunton Dean Kale that I got from Incredible Vegetables in the UK and it's getting big. And this is a perennial kale that actually tastes quite nice, even the big leaves, but the tender leaves, the, the younger leaves are the best and you just keep picking them throughout the year. I'm gonna leave it to establish first before I do too much with it. And then the netting here is to protect it against any rabbits or uh, butterflies, the white butterflies. And this bed is just going to become my perennial patch for the most part. Oh, I'm just basking in that sunshine. It feels so good. It's been a long winter. It's been a long winter for all of us, hasn't it? Oh, and I know that some of you still have snow on the ground. I don't know how you do it. It's long enough here, winter and the dark days. When spring comes, it is such a relief. And with the house move impending, that's also such a relief. It's taken so long, so incredibly long. We put an offer in on the house in September of last year, and it is now April. The good news on that is that we have officially signed. We've signed all of our documents and we are just waiting for our current lockdown to end, for things to return to some form of, of uh, normality. And then we will be able to move house. So we're essentially just waiting right now for an actual completion date, which could be next week. It could be the week after. It's going to be soon though. And it's going to be absolutely friggin' mental because we are, we've got so many things to move. We've got plants and pots. We've got plants and trays. We've got seedlings. And I have actually been trying to hold back on doing too many seedlings because I know it's going to be a mission moving them. So I'm a little bit anxious on that because I really want to start getting sewing. Oh yeah. And everything inside the house too. <laughs> We're living right now surrounded by boxes because we've started packing. Not everything, so things that we know that we won't need immediately, but would really like to get those loaded, get them into the new house so that we can get settled and I can start on the new garden. And there's going to be a lot of work there. It needs so much work and there's so much more space. Can't wait to show it to you. The garden is getting pretty tidy. I've been emptying compost, emptying pots, <laughs> getting things just kind of stacked up and ready to go. The greenhouse, I can't do much with right now because I obviously need the warmth for a lot of plants in here, especially smaller seedlings. The Cape gooseberries that I showed how to propagate end of last year doing really well. These are the, the new plants and they've been in the porch in the house all winter long. And I've got three or four decent sized plants off of them. I've got loads of greens. These are getting pretty big. I'll need to plant them out soon. And I hope to put them into some of my, my vertical planters and the allotment in the interim of our move and creating the new garden. The leeks, these are the perennial leeks. They've really shot up. So these are going to be going out into the perennial bed in the allotment next to the nine star broccoli. Lots of other things sprouting, lots of echinacea that really needs to be transplanted out. The onions are all out here now, getting some height. We've got Maggie. Are you trying to get in? In the end, I had enough raspberry canes to do two sections of the raspberry bed edging here. And then the, this last section is made out of willow, which I had tucked around behind the compost pile. And willow is another great material that you can use in the garden for all kinds of things. Again, supports, building wattle edging, the windbreak that I have in the allotment. So the willow hurdle is made out of this. So 
If you have sticks and twigs and other types of refuse in the garden, feel free to use it instead of going out and buying brand new bamboo canes or similar. So that is the allotment garden in April. I hope very soon that I will be able to give you a tour of the new home garden. Right now, the home garden is pretty bare. The greenhouse is full because I've got plants in there that I want to protect from the frost that uh, is no doubt coming this weekend. But soon I will be in the new greenhouse, which is bigger. Looking forward to that, just a little bit bigger and getting started with spring properly. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time here on Lovely Greens. Bye for now. One last thing before you go. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to Lovely Greens and click that little bell icon so that you get notifications for when new videos are out.